In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant by the same spirit to be truly wise, and ever rejoice in his consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady, seat of wisdom. Pray for us, Saint Gabriel. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening, again, everyone. Um, salve te, omnes. Um, so today we have a session on adjectives. Um, they they are interesting set of animals. Um, as as we said about adjectives previously. They qualify a noun or a pronoun. So we we have a thing. Um, so for instance, if I said that if you look at dog, I have a dog. Okay, immediately we say dog, we all have different images, pictures of dogs in our head. So we can limit the dog in as much as we can say it's a white dog. So immediately. Brown dogs disappear, black dogs disappear. Um, green dogs, if there are any, they all go. And we can say it's a big dog, so it's a big um, white dog. So the small dogs disappear. We can say it's a fierce dog, so the team ones go. Um, we can then talk about the breed. It's an it's a Alsatian, not a Dalmatian, but it's white. It's Alsatian, okay, so all the other dogs disappear. And we can keep narrowing it down. We can then say it belongs to John. So now it's only John's dog, and it's white and it's big and so on. Um, and this is essentially what uh, adjectives do. They um, restrict the noun in some way, some fashion. Okay. So as I described the dog, we limited it by color, we limited it by size, we also limited it by possession. Um, so previously we talked about adjectives in as much as they limit the noun in different ways um, according to size and so on. Today what we're going to do is look at adjectives that uh, restrict the noun according to possession. Now, if we're talking about possession, then we're talking about persons, um, because persons possess things, and um, not necessarily um, a human person, but a different kinds of person. And even objects, in a sense, are persons. So for instance, um, you, you could have uh, a wall, that is tall, so you have a tall wall. You know, so in that sense, it's a kind of possession. Um, it's limited itself. When we're talking about persons, we, we, we're talking about I, me, first, and then you, second, and then he, she, or it, third. Okay, so we're going to look at those. Now, unfortunately, it's not so easy. It's a little, just a little complicated because we have first person, second person, and third person. So I am the first person. We did that um, uh, last week. I, I am the first person. You are the second. And he, she, or it is the third. But we can also have those persons in the plural. So I is singular, but we, first person, are plural. You are singular, thou, and and um, ye, or they, are, or you, or you people, are plural, and she, he, she, it, is singular, and they are plural. So you can have all men, all masculine, would be they, all feminine, they be they, all its, neuters, would be they in the plural. And of course, you have a mixture, they still in the plural, they. So we're going to look at that, um, at the, the possessive adjectives. And um, we're going to do it only looking for this, at, at possession in the singular. 
um, uh, for, for the moment. And um, next week, we'll look at it in the plural. Um, so we'll begin with my sharing the screen. Um, the notes, of course, uh, were sent. Um, for some reason, they didn't go out the first time, um, but I sent them. I sent them last night, um, and they didn't go out, so I sent them again and today. You should receive them. If not, you can pick them up um, in the screen. So we want F. So is it F five? Yep, um, maybe click the slideshow tab and we can press the icon on the top left. Oh, yeah, okay, so of course. When I, okay, right, um, because I rebooted. Okay, let's go. Father, it's still not full screen. I think you might have shared just uh, PowerPoint rather than your, your display. Rather than? Oh, so you, you share your screen. I, I thought I did. Um, okay, stop share. Let's try again. Okay, so sh share screen. Right. That's it. Um, I don't know if anyone else can weigh in here, but I can only see PowerPoint still. It's fine from for our side. Okay, maybe it's me. Okay. So every, everybody's okay at this point? Yes. Okay. Anybody's not, this is your opportunity to shout. Okay. Right, so off we go. So we're going to look at possessive adjectives in English. So we have an idea of what we're talking about. So possessive adjectives are of two types in English. They're either attributive or predicative. Remember what it was what, when you talked about attributive um, adjectives? We, um, we, we said it was my or our, yours, his, she, it, okay? And um, if it is a predicative, is essentially is was being introduced there. So um, we, could, we said it was, we, could, we looked at the day, we said it's a sunny day and that's attributive, we're describing the day. And we said for the predicative, the day is sunny. So that's how it works in English. Um, so essentially, with, since we're talking about the possessive, we're saying the attributive. So it's my hat, it's our home, it's your dog, it's his car, it's her um, boyfriend, it's it's um, uh, it's what, what belongs to it. You know, so it's it's for whatever, and it's um, their country. So in each of these, we the the noun, okay, has some qualifier to it. Now, so we have my book is called their mother. So, okay, when we look at the predicative, it's mine, it's ours, it's yours, it's their us. And there's so whose book is it? It is the book is mine. Okay, whose house is this? The house is ours. Is again, you know, whose shoes they are yours, so on. It's there's that equality that is or are that comes in, and that tells us it's uh, it's um, a predicative adjective. So the hat is hers, the children are theirs, and so on. So we do this without thinking in English, of course. But um, when we're doing a lang another language, 
it becomes a little, it's important for us to, to know what we're talking about. So let us now, don't want to say this. Oh yes, there's something very important about um, English and certainly Latin. Um, in English, we have a noun. Okay, let's take a house, for instance. Um, and we would say, my house. And the emphasis in English tends to be on mine. I possess it. So in English, the person is very important. And it's almost as if the house belongs to me and I can do what I want with it, you know. In Latin, it's not like that. What, what is, is, is independent and stays the same is the noun. So again, if we take the house, the house is important. If, um, you know, if I say casa, that's the house. Um, and the, the adjective, unlike in English, in Latin, the adjective goes behind. In English, the adjective goes in front. So um, if, if we say it, it casa is house, casa mea, house mine. Okay, but the house, if I were to sell the house to someone else, it's no longer mine, but the house stays exactly the same. It now belongs to somebody else. If I, if I sell it to you, it's tua, it's you. So it's now casa, still the same, but tua. And that changes, okay? And so on for, for other adjectives. So if I were to um, do something to the house, paint it, for instance, and change its color, that also will change, but the house still remains the same, okay? So um, that's an, I'll come back to that thought late, later on, but it's, um, it's an important way of reflecting on, on Latin. And so in, in Latin, we don't have the problems that, that's appearing now in the English language as, as to all the gender problems. They just simply don't exist in Latin. So let us not get diverted, we're going to something else. Um, so we're going to look at the possessive adjectives in Latin, okay? We're going to look in Latin, there are the possessive adjectives for the first and second persons only. And there's what's called a reflexive possessive adjective for the third person. And we, we have, the, that exists also in English, but only, we only use it for clarity. And that's where we use we use to make to indicate it's reflexive, we use the word own. Okay, so we'd say, for instance, um, the, um, how can I say it? It is his own fault. So it is his own fault. Whose fault is it? It is his own, reflecting on him, on he, the, um, the person. So that we have that reflexive adjective. And there's another one that's non-reflexive, which we'll be dealing with later. Um, so I'm going to deal with the reflexive because that is the easier one to deal with. Um, and it's easy to recognize as well. So when referring to one person, singular, we say meus, that's me, not my, or tus, that's yours. And by uh, most fortuitously, they're going to be declined like Angelus and Dominus. Okay? Because as you can see, it, they end in us, us, uh, both of them. And when we see any noun in us at the moment, we know that it's, it's second declension and it's masculine. Okay? So here we have meus and tus, okay, me and yours, mine and yours, uh, you and me, me and you, okay. Lost, um, lost song, Father. Sorry? Hello? Can you hear me? Okay. Am I back on, am yeah. back on track? Okay. So, um, I'll just repeat in case anyone didn't hear. So we have, um, one person, we're referring to one person. 
So me in the first instance, you in the second. So we have meus and tus. They belong to the second declension, or the rather the decline, like nouns of the second declension. And we know that because it's us, US. Anyone else has lost your sound? No, no. 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 I can hear fine. I can hear. I can hear also. Okay. I can hear. I can hear. need to check your system. Okay. All right. Um, so second declension, um, masculine. Now, when referring to two or more persons, so we have our or, and, and um, actually that vessel should be your, of course, an error there. Um, so th that should be your, not our. These are going to be declined like liber and magister, but I'm not going to deal with those just yet. I just, I'm, I'm introducing them so that you are aware of them. Okay. So we have uh, a we, we now have our, but we is possessive. And for you, we have your, okay. So we, and then we have the third person mm -hmm. reflexive. The, so the reflexive possessive adjective for the third person is sus, and that is his, her, uh, it's there. Okay, and again, you can see that it has the same second declension form, U, U.S., us. So this is going to be declined like dominus um, again, <clears throat> and it is um, normally used when referring to the subject of its clause, okay? So it is his own book. So the book belongs to the person whom we're talking about. It is, if I said it is his book, it could be anybody at all. But if I say it is his own book, then it's that particular person about whom I'm speaking, okay? Um, There'll be some examples later on. So if there is no risk of ambiguity, suus may be omitted. Okay. So it's we essentially the suus is going to be used in those cases where there is ambiguity. So if you say it's it's his book, it could be anybody else. Okay. But if we're talking about a particular person, then you say it's his own book. In that other words, the person about whom we are speaking. Okay, let's look then at the little the table so that we can um, uh, get some idea. All right. So we have, the first column we have is that of the cases, right? So we have nominative, optative, accusative, genitive, dative, and ablative. Fair enough. We're going to be looking at the first person and we're simply looking at males. So first person singular, okay. And in the males, now just again to avoid the confusion, if I'm talking about the first person cruel, okay, I have to go to noster, our. But I'm only looking at the first person singular, okay? The adjective will describe the noun. So whatever shape the noun takes, the adjective must match it, okay? So if I have, um, uh, for, for instance, casa, um, perhaps I should um, take uh, um, something masculine because we're dealing with the masculine. Um, so, um, if I were to take, uh, what's masculine? Dominus, okay. So, Dominus is masculine, Meus is also masculine, so I can say Dominus Meus, my God, okay? Now, if the gods are plural, sorry, not gods, lords, my lord, if, if lords are plural, they'll be Domini. 
So the adjective has to match that. So it would be may e. So when we're talking about the singular and plural here, we're referring essentially to the noun. The adjective must match the noun. The noun is the key thing. The noun doesn't change, but the adjective always has to match it. So if the noun is singular, the adjective must be singular. If the noun is plural, the adjective must be plural. It's not like the English, where the adjective will, say, will stay the same. So I can say, my house, my houses. Okay, the my stays the same. In Latin, it's not so. It's the, it's the house that stays the same. And I hope I've said that and I haven't confused you. Okay, so let's go. So if we look at, in the, the first column, we have my in singular. So we have meus, which is masculine. And in a nominative case, and if we look in the plural form, that us, that us becomes e, may e. As, as we have dominus, domini, we have meus, may e. Okay? Because we have more than one. And again, if I go down, I'm just looking at the masculine at the moment, in the vocative, there, there is no me, okay? Um, the, actually, the, there is um, one in, in the masculine, and that's MI. But we, we, don't, we don't call me, we don't call my me. No, can't be. But we have the accusative, we have meum, okay? Because it's accusative. It is the object in the sentence. So um, if I have God, It'll be deum meum, my God. And if I have gods, then it will be deos. Okay? And the adjective must match. So it'll be meos, deos, meos, my gods. And then in the genitive, we have mei, and then we have meorum. So it's exactly. Um, as we did at the beginning, when we um, declined Deus, Dominus, Ue, Liber, and so on. Okay? It's, it's going to take the same form. So Mei, and the plural is Meorum, and then the dative is Meo, and it's going to be Meis in the plural. And again, the ablative is Meo, and it's going to be Meis again. Okay. Having said that, and hoping I've not confused you, we're going to do the same thing for the feminine. So the second column in, under my singular, the second col column in, we have mea. So if we have, it's a nominative. So if we're talking about, for instance, my house, be casa mea. Okay. And the, the plural, if I have more than one house, I have houses, it will be casse, okay, me. And of course, the vocative is, um, uh, out with the, don't speak about that. And the accusative, okay, it's meam, and the plural will be meas. And then the genitive, may, and may or room. Okay, so it's just as when we we decline casa or villa or any of the feminine ones. Okay, um, for the dative, we have may. Okay, just as the genitive, and corresponding to the, in the plural, we have mayis. And then the ablative is mea again, and the 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 um, the, 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 the plural uh, of the ablative is meis. Okay, having said that, we now come to the neuter. So a neuter. So we again we we have templum temple templum and its genitive is templi. So we have temp, 
templum meum, my temple. And if we have more than one temple, then it will be templa, and the neuter will be mea. Okay. The, remember, one of the beauties of the neuter is that the nominative, vocative, and accusative are the same, and the plurals always end in a. Okay. So you can, that, that makes life a little bit easier. The neuters always end in a, regardless of the. Um, the um, uh, uh, group, whichever um, noun group that they belong to, whichever it's going to be the same. So then, again, we have for the plural, the, sorry, for the accusative, we have meum, which is the same as the nominative. So the neuter plural will be mea. And then for the genitive, we have mei. So it's a bit like the, the masculine. Okay, and we have meorum. Okay, again, the same as the um, masculine. Okay. And then we have the dative and the ablative. Again, they're the same. So it's meo in both cases and meis in both cases. Okay, so essentially what we've looked at are the possessive adjectives for the first person, singular, um, we've seen that it's meus and that it behaves exactly as the second declension nouns, which we have dealt with, and the first declension noun, which we dealt with at the, at the, at the very, very beginning. So there's nothing really new there, except that it, the, the adjective can be masculine, feminine, or neuter, whereas the, the noun is, is one of those groups. So the adjective takes a form, corresponding form for the noun. Okay. I'm sure that, uh, I want you to look at this and we see that um, the, if we look at the nominative case, we see that it's us, a, uh, um, yes? In the singular, us, a, uh, um. Okay, well, keep that in mind because the adjectives that are going to follow will be that same pattern. And of course, the, 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 um, the declensions are going to be the same. So let's look at the next one. So this is me, my, I. Right. We're looking at you next, second person. So the second person, this is thou, okay, or thy. The second person is singular, okay? So we're not talking about more than one person. We're talking about the second person, okay? And we have the case, we have, we have thou. And in the Latin, the nom nominative is tu. That means you, okay, you singular. Now, if we, so if, um, okay, it's a, okay, that, um, that, and if we go, I'm, going, I'm going back to the first person, and you see that nominative is ego, and not uh, me. But if we look at the second person, it's two. Okay, and the vocative is two because I can call you, hello, and the accusative is te. The genitive is tui, the dative is tb. And the ablative is a again. Now, if we go to the adjective, so what we've looked at is the, the person there. Um, we're looking now at the adjective. We had two, and now we have two us as a masculine. We look at the line with that of the nominative, right? The first line there. So we have two, we have two us. And then we have the feminine, two are, and two um. But it's not exactly the same as meus, except instead of me, we have two. Yes? So it's following exactly the same pattern. And so the masculine tools, we, we have the, the singular as tools, and we have the plural as two we. So if the noun, remember, this is describing nouns, huh? not the person, the nouns. So tools, and the plural is going to be two-way. 
the, for the vocative is the same. The accusative is to whom and to us for the plural. The genitive is to we and to warum. To o and to is, to o and to is. So essentially, there's nothing new except instead of me, us, I have to us. Instead of me, us, I have to us. Yes? So when you see me, it's first person. When you see two, the second person. So the, the forms, the shapes, the, 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 um, the, um, the, the shape of the adjective have not changed. All you have to do is recognize whether it's me or you so far. Okay? So nothing new again, except now you know that you have me and you. Me and two. Okay? So that's, hopefully that's not confusing. And we move to the next, which is the third person, reflexive. Okay, so it's going to be his, her, or its. So it's, we have now su, us. Okay, so we, in English, we have oneself, one's own self, referring to oneself. And the, 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 nom, the, the masculine nominative is su, us. So we had meus, to us, su, us. And the form remains exactly the same after that. So the vocative, so we look at the masculine nominative is suus, the vocative is suus as well. The accusative is su um. Okay. The genitive is sui. The dative is suo. The ablative is suo. So that's the, the masculine. Okay. And the plurals are uh, as before. The us becomes I, he, pronounce he, and the suus is sui, and suum is suos, and then sui, suorum, suos, suis, suos, suis. Okay, so the masculine, the singular and plural, they, they behave exactly as before, just as the males did, and just as the tools did. So again, there is nothing here. Except that it's a reflexive, so it means one's self or his own, her own, its own. It has this is this is tied to the person, the the, the in in the, the dominant person in the clause. What the person about the, the person about whom we are talking. Okay. Oh well. So again, just to rehash. We, we've just been looking at the first declension and the second declension nouns, except now we'd call them adjectives and they will take the shape, the form of the noun, okay? Whether it's masculine, feminine, or neuter. Okay, let's see if we can make this a little, even more easy to understand. So, oh, what have I done? Press something and something happened. Let's get rid of this. Okay. So let's see. Uh -huh. okay. okay. All right. Let's take an example. I said to my friend John, it's in English, I am praising my son. Okay. I am praising my son. So, in Latin, I am praising is laudo. Okay. It needs an accusative, it needs an object. So, filium, the son. And whose son is it? It's not anybody else's but mine. So, it's meum. So, filium, because that's the accusative case. And the meum, which is my, the meum has to match the filium. Okay? And the same would apply if I'm calling. So it will be wo, 
I am vocare, vocal vocare is to call. Okay. I am calling my son. So it's vocal. Filium meum. I am calling my son. I'm praising my son. Okay. So the possessive adjective is meum, it's my, and it must correspond to filium. Okay. All right, let's go. So I said to John, I'm praising my son. So John says to me, you are praising your son. So what has changed? Well, John now is saying to me. So John is saying, you, I'm talking about myself. I'm praising my son. But John is saying, you are praising your son. So, so what has changed is that John is repeating what I said, okay? Except that he's turned it around to the person. So in the first case, it's I. In the second case, it's you. That is the subject, okay? So in Latin, what are you going to have? So lau in I am praising is laudo. You are praising is laudas. But the sun stays the same. The sun is the object. He is going to stay the same. He's not going to change in any way. He's still the object of the sentence. But the person has changed. And therefore, the adjective has to change. But it's, it's your. Instead, in the first case, it's my. It's now your. And so it's going to be to. And because it's filium and it's the accusative case, it's the object, it's to whom. So you are praising your son. You are calling your son. It's going to be for cas. You are calling your son. Filium to whom. Okay? Right. So we've seen that. Um, I praise my son is one thing. It has to be meum, my. You are praising your son, it has to be two. Okay, now let's look at the third. So John goes around gossiping. He says to Peter, he's praising his son, you know. So he is praising. It's going to be loud that, isn't it? The filium is going to stay the same because it's the object of the sentence. That's going to stay the same. And he is praising his own son. That's the trick. He is praising his son. Could be somebody else's son. But if he is the subject, then he is going to be, it's going to be sum, his own son. That sum is going to be his own. It's reflexive. Okay? It reflects on the subject of the sentence. So he is calling his own son is going to be vocat filium sum. If we if we just had um, vocat filium, he's calling the son. He's calling the son. Which one? His own son or somebody else's son? But the sum tells me it's his own son. Okay. Now. If he had um, more than one son, so I want to say he is praising. Okay, let's let, let's say praising. Um, he is praising his son. So loud that he is praising. He has more than one son, so be filios. Okay, he is calling sons, his son. So it's going to be suos. Because that so that that sum his has to reflect on filios, upon the sons. So be source. He is calling his sons. So it will be vocat. He is calling his sons. It's filios. He has more than one filios. So we want the plural of filio is filios, and corresponded to be suos. Okay. So the adjective must match 
the noun. That's the bottom line. So when you translate a sentence, we look at the verb first. Then we look for the 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 um the the um accusative, the object. Okay. And then the object, whether it's singular or plural. And then we look for the adjective that describes the object. Okay. All right. Coco, video me, I'm calling my son. Vocas, okay, you are calling my son. Okay, now notice this, the slight difference here. Voco, I am calling Ilio Meum, my son. You are calling my son. So you are calling Vocas, son, Ilium, and whose son? Not yours, but my son you're calling. It has to be Meum. Okay, they are calling my son, okay? So they are calling, you see that the subject can change, but the filium stays the same because it's the same son. The meum tells you it's mine, okay? They're calling my son, vocant filium meum. I can say the same thing. All you people are calling my son. That filium meum will always stay the same. Okay, so the subject can change in many ways, but the object remains the same, which is what I said at the beginning. The noun stays the same, it's fixed, it's there. It can only change, in, or it, it doesn't change. It's just everything around it changes, okay? Whether it's he is doing it, she is doing it, they are doing it, you are doing it, we are doing it, but the thing stays the same. So we can say in a word, philosophically, Latin is grounded in reality, in, in something substantial. Okay. Okay, let's see. Let, if we just look at the English, that's right, the Latin part, we have vocas, so it's you are calling. You are calling. Well, who are you calling? Filium, the sun, you're calling the sun. Vocas, filium, you are calling the sun, that's all. But the tomb is now going to limit it. The tomb is your, you are calling your son. Okay, so you are calling Zvokas, Filium is the son, the object. Tomb describes whom you're calling. If we look at the second one above, Vokas, Filium, Meum, you are calling my son. Vokas, Filium, Tomb, you're calling your son. Okay, Voco. I am calling your son. So vocal, I'm calling Filium, the son, I'm calling the son. And to limit it to whose son I'm calling at the tomb is your son, I'm calling your son. So when you look at the first, very first line, the vocal Filium Meum, and the last one you just, just did, vocal Filium Tuum, you see the difference? The Tuum changes the son that is being called, okay? Voco, medium, two. Okay. All right. Vocat, he, she, it perhaps is calling your son. So it's vocat and it's medium, two. Okay. I could actually have we in there as well. We are calling your son. So it is just the vocamus. We are calling your son. It is the same. They are calling your son. Who can? They are calling your son. Okay. So you see the what again? What we come back to basic thing when we translate Latin, we look for the verb. So it tells us whether it's I, you, he, she, it, we, all you people, or they. And then we look for the object. Okay. And then we look for the adjective, if there is one. Okay. Onwards, onwards. Oh, he had to come into it. Walk at he. He, um, walk at Filium soon. He is calling the son, but it's his or her own son. So 
Vokat, we can't tell whether it's he, she, or it. Okay, we will need to have the actual subject present to say whether it's he, she, or it. Is it the farmer? Okay, is it the mother? You know, is it the, the, the servant, whoever it is? So we will need more information to determine that vocat, who is it that's calling? But whoever is calling, he's calling the son. The son stays the same. And the sum says he's calling not your son or my son, but his own son. So his or her own son. So that sum is that own corresponds to sum. He's calling his own son. He could be calling somebody else's son. And in that case, we need another word which we have not done yet. It's the non reflexive. We haven't done it yet. So we're just focusing simply on the reflexive. Okay. okay, so we have vocat filium sum. Now, if we go back to the previous line, we have vocat, he, she is calling your son. Okay, there it is, sum. Calling his own son is sum. Calling my son, although I have vocat, is calling my son would be filium meum. Okay. Vocas, you. Uh, calling uh, whose son? Soon, his son. Ah, there's a problem here. It's reflexive, and we can't do it because the subject is you. Okay, that's the problem. So it's not. You can't use soon here. Okay, because it's reflexive. That soon always refers to the subject. So this is what we're going to be dealing with. All right, so we're going to look at some adjectives, other adjectives. Oh, we did that last week, didn't we, I think. It looks familiar. Um, okay, but we can just run through it. That slide stayed on. I meant to delete it. So we have antiquus, aum. So the feminine will be antiqua. And the, the ancient, old, and of course the the um, neuter would be anti um, okay, adus aum is lofty, difficult, tall, and so on. Cunctus cuncta cunctum is all. Albus alba album is white. Okay. Longus longa longum is long. And multus, multa, multum, much or many. Ambiguous, ambigua, ambiguum, the ambiguous, changeable. Pavus, pava, pavum, small. These are adjectives, so they will be describing the noun. So if the noun is masculine, it's us. If the noun is feminine, it will end in a. And if it's a neuter, it's um. So um, we can go on. Or more adjectives. We, we did these, didn't we? Um, okay, so I'll jump. Okay, let's look at a passage from scripture, uh, Matthew 22, 16, 17, just two verses. Um, tung, that's then. So don't have to worry about it just yet. It's one of those words we stick in there. Then, okay, parasie. Okay, let's um, read through the Latin. And then we'll pick it up from there. Tunc parisie mi tunt ei discipulos suos. Cum, it's not in your notes, um, it's on, on screen. Cum Herodianis dicentes magister shibus quia verax es et viam dei in veritate. Coaches at non est tibi cura de alico non enim respicis personam hominum dic ego nobis quid tibi videatu dicet sen, sentum sensum dare cesari and non.
you want to come around and see. Okay. All right. So let's look at it. Let's first of all look for the verbs. Okay, well, in the first line, it's mitunt. From mito, we did mito to send. Hmm? Mito, mitere. Okay, to send. Okay, the other verbs, well, the chant is a verb, we haven't done it yet. Shimus, that's we. Shimus, we did shio, that's no. Okay, where else? S, yes, that's another verb. Okay, in the next line, doches, you teach from docere, doceo, docere, that's a verb. Uh, non est, est, in the next line. So that's another verb. Respicis, that's another verb there. Is, respicio. Um, dic, that's a verb we haven't done yet. It's um, the imperative. Um, videator, that's uh, also another verb which we haven't done yet. And um, dare, of course, we've done. Do, dare, to give. Okay. So we, we can recognize the verbs. All right, let's look for the nouns. Okay, we look for the nouns. Should we do all of them? Uh, okay, let's, let's see. We can look for the, the nouns that are subjects. So the first one is Pharisei, Pharisaeus. So that's cruel. So E. Um, magister. Um, that's evocative. Um, the nouns verax, that's a noun. Um, sorry, it's, yeah. Um, the even recate dot as non as cura. Okay, right. Let's look for the nouns that are in the accusative case. That's easy. The chipulos is a noun. Yeah, disciples. Um, uh, what else? Uh, nouns, uh, uh, true. Um, viam is, a, is also uh, a noun. It's in the accusative case. Um, non, stb, cura, uh, personam, that's another noun. Um, and, um, Sensum, that's another noun, yes? Okay. So we can recognize the nouns in the accusative case. Now let's look for the adjectives. Now we know some. Suos is definitely adjective. Their own, huh? Okay, there's one. Um, we have verax adjectives. Verax is um, an adjective. It describes, yes? Vm dei. Oh, dei is, is a noun, isn't it? It's in the in the uh, genitive case of, of, of God. Okay, veritate also is a noun, uh, but it's, it's a different declension. Um, what am I looking for? We're looking for the, adge the adjectives. Okay, TB we can recognize to you. Um, persona hominum. Hominum, that's, that is in the genitive. We haven't done the third declension yet. Uh, Ego nobis, nobis we, we mentioned before. TB, we seen before. Dari, Cesarari, that's, um, that's also a noun. Okay. Or not. Okay, so we can go through it now. So again, just looking at the Latin. Tunc is then the Pharisees. So if you look at the English now, then the Pharisees. Mitunt, they sent. So we say they sent, they sent a. So they sent to him. So what did they send? They sent the chipulos. So they sent their disciples, the chipulos. Suos is their own. They sent their own disciples, a, to him, to Jesus. That is. So just that first time we're looking at. Then the Pharisees sent their disciples to him. Cum is with, okay? 
with Herodianis, the Herodian. So IS tells us it is an ablative. Herodian, Herodi Her Herodianus. So it's her, the, the ablative is is. There's a cum. Okay. Um, so he sent in more than one of them. So that's why it's in the proof with the Herodian. Dicentes, saying. That's a verb we haven't done yet. <coughs> Pardon me. Magister, that's the vocative. Master, magister. The verb, shimus, we know. We are that, we haven't done it yet, but we know that S, E S, you are, okay? You are what? Verax. If you look at this, Vera. So it's one of the, it's, it's um, uh, 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 adjective, so, um, sorry, it's a, a, a noun of the third declension, which we haven't done as yet. So you are true, but true what? Speaker, okay? You are a true speaker. And, and, et is and, viam is the way of God. So the, Teach it, you teach, doches is you teach. So we know you are true and you teach. What do you teach? The way, Piam, of God in veritate, in truth. So that in is an ablative again. Okay, and you can see the English, you teach is the way of God in truth. Et is and, non, not, s. It is something is not to you. So you have no care, the skura, you, the, so you don't care. Um, it's of no concern of yours to you, okay? You, it's no concern to you about anyone. They adequo, that's, we haven't an adequo, but it is an ablative. There's the day in front of it that tells us it's ablative. So you don't care about anyone. Okay, um, you don't care about anyone. None, for not also, you don't look at, you also do not look at a person, the person of men. Okay, hominum is plural of, of, of homo, um, homin, um, homo hominis. So you don't care, you have no regard to the person of men. Okay. Tell, Dick is to tell, it's an imperative. Tell, therefore, to us, tell to us, nobis, what, videato, what it seems to you, or what do you think? How do you see it? Lichet, is it lawful? Sensum, tribute, to give, is it lawful to give? There's a verb, is it lawful to give, dare? Sensum, to Caesar, okay, Caesarius, Caesarus, Caesarus, and the ablative, I'm sorry, the dative, is to give to Caesar, or not, or none. So uh, that's a, it's just two verses, but there's, uh, what I've been trying to do is to go through the scriptures and find um, a passage which has the things that we've done, namely first and second declensions in the present tense, uh, with the the, the source, well, with the adjectives as well. So I I hope you didn't find that particularly difficult, you know, because all the, all the words, well, the the verbs certainly we've we've come across in the present um, tense. So I think that's it. That was a, that came on late actually. So end of session ten. There's a little discrepancy because one of our sessions. We just went over the homework. And the good news, of course, is that we have homework, um, which uh, um, I, I hope you won't find as arduous as the last time. You know the Latin for arduous, arduous, arum. Okay. Um, oh, that's, gosh, that's how we're gone already. Okay. So, um,
Yes, so that uh, completes the adjectives to, to date. The, uh, um, in the homework, um, I, 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 I did this alternatively, as you would see. So you have English and Latin. Um, and the English, you just put the Latin translation and vice versa, the Latin for the English translation. And um, I've tried to, to, to use a lot of what we have done so far with the adjectives. Um, and it's kind of, kind of easy, I think. That said, any questions? And I have one question. Um, okay. Looking at uh, M-E-I, 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 and M-E-A-E. M-E-I, M-E-I, yes. M-E-I, and what about M-E-A? M-E-I. So M-E-A-E is May. May, yeah, May. 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 Okay. May. Oh. May. All right. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Welcome. Well, I had a question. I noticed that there are no punctuations in the Latin translations. And yeah. like if, like in the case of is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Yeah. There was a question mark. It would help you to understand it was a question. Yeah. So it, right. It, yes. It, one, one of you, you, Latin has become easy, actually. In classical Latin, they didn't have punctuation marks. And they, so there was no full stop or comma um, or question mark. It would come from the construction of the sentence and the intonation. Um, so often you see on the, on the monuments, and they use capital letters as well. You know, So the, um, you'd have to know uh, where where to put the punctuation mark, and usually the the sentences would end with, as I said, with a verb. So you know that the verb was sort of governed everything that went before it. That's why, I, as we, I, as I speaking too quickly, as I said, when you have a sentence in Latin, look for the verb. That will tell you um, where it where it is. I'm not focusing on style. Um, because um, in, in the translations, I'm, I'm not interested in style. Um, um, because we're not, we're, we're doing, the, don't forget, the object is to, to be able to grasp the mass easier, to grasp the scriptures, because in the mass we have the epistle and gospel, so you'll be able to grasp that. And, it, and you have the punctuation marks there in Latin to make it easy for you. Um, so th this is very hands-on practical um, exercise. Okay, thank you, Father. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I hope. Very interesting, Lord. Father. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. But thank the Lord who gave, who has given us this, um, the, the 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 gift of language, um, which sadly is so abused these days. Um, remember, language is is important because God spoke and things came into being. God called, God pronounced the noun, you know, and it was. And um, in the beginning was the word, the noun, and the word became flesh, you know. So we, we also need to be careful with the language that we use um, because it does affect um, our surroundings and our relationships and everything about us. Um, as I'm sure you know, the, the angry word we should avoid, scripture tells us. And um, we should, in fact, bless God for the gift of language. There were so many dumb people in the scriptures. Now, Lord, you know, touch their lips, you know. And with the dumb, in a great number of cases, he always uses saliva to loosen the, the tongue of the, of the dumb. Uh, again, drawing that parallel that he spoke. And you know, uh, things came into being. And of course, when we speak, the saliva is very important. If we don't have saliva in our mouths, it's difficult for us to speak. You know, so um, even the Lord using saliva is indicative of that. Okay. Um, anything else? No. Well, 
let us thank God for the gift of language, the gift of tongues. Um, let's also thank him for the gift of understanding, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, an important one. And um, let's ask for increasing faith. Again, I sent out also the a reflection on the consecration tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is important, the piece of enunciation. The word became flesh. This is the heart of our faith, and this is what the piece is about. The word became flesh. And so the words that the Holy Father will use for the consecration, they really should reflect what our Lord and Our Lady required. Remember, Our Lady didn't come on her own back. She said that God requires this. You know, this is what God wants. And um, we, really, we really are praying that Russia will be consecrated, um, not, not the rest of the world. That's not us for the church. And that the, what the other conditions are, in particular, the reparation for offenses against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. You know, um, those who deny her Immaculate Conception of Perpetual Virginity, her uh, divine maternity, that she is the mother of God. Those who insult her personally and uh, it, um, in her sacred images, and those who alienate children from her, because there's so many people who blaspheme our Blessed Lady. Um, and this is an offense to, to God himself, because not only are we insulting his greatest and most perfect creation, but also his own mother. So um, as Caribbean people, we certainly know what that means. So let us pray intensely for the Holy Father tomorrow and for the bishops who will join him. Let's also make our own personal um, contribution to it. You know, um, tomorrow uh, we, we can, Perhaps say an extra Holy Rosary we can join in spiritually, um, but certainly we need to pray um, because we are really standing on the brink, you know, of uh, something terrible. Um, and only, as Our Lady said, only she can help. So, with that in mind, we'll say the Angelus and asking her, our Mother Perpetual, help help us in this critical time in our history personal as well as global. Thank you. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary and she and she by the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary Mother, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, sinners, now and at the hour of death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary Mother, Mother of God, God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that, that we may be worthy of God. Let's just pray. O Lord, we beseech you, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the divine sisters remain always with us. And may the souls of the faithful departed and the blessed God rest in peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, remain with you now and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. So we shall see on Sunday and then next Thursday, please God. Okay, thank have a good evening, much, everyone. Father. God bless you. Good evening, Father. God bless you. Thank you very much. Have a good night.